Hi, this screencast is going to walk through configuring the web form module for Drupal 8. My name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as J Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. So what's configurable in the web form module? Well, the web form module ships with reasonable defaults, but everything is customizable. And, and the key concepts around what's customizable is every message and label that you see on screen is customizable. Um, elements, handlers, and exporters can be disabled. Rendered elements, anything you see on screen, whether it's a, an, a button, a text field, a confirmation page, um, even the progress bar, their att the attributes around these elements can be customized. When I say attributes, that's the HTML attributes, which would include, usually it's visual stuff. It's the style attribute and the classes that are associated with the element. You can also add custom data attributes, which are just rendered as regular HTML attributes for kind of custom tracking and stuff like that. All libraries are optional. All external libraries can be turned on and off as needed. And really, any questionable feature can be disabled under advanced settings. You can even turn off the, the um, right-hand system tray that opens up. You can switch back to using modal dialogs. Uh, that's just one example of what can be customized. And the and, and big question is, what, what should be configured? Well, give users access to the features and functionality and behaviors that they require. And you got to just think about what your requirements are. And these are things that, you know, should always be configured. Private file access for file uploads is critical. It's kind of a requirement because public file access to file uploads has security issues and that's turned off by default. Now, you can go in and turn that on, public file access, or you should just enable private file access for all your file uploads. And if you don't have private file, file uploads, just turn off the elements. Um, spam protection is a big thing to consider when you're putting forms out there on your website. Those you can use third-party add-ons and there's you know screencasts about that but just to throw them out there. Honeypot, Antibot, and Recapture are the big ones I would recommend looking at. Um, you can use all three. Well I, I would use you know one or two of them is usually enough. Um, you should configure what elements you need. There's a lot of elements that come with the web form module and you can turn on and off, turn off the ones you don't need. If you're not doing file uploads, don't have it. If you don't need a table select element, turn it off. Um, API keys are important to consider if you're using the location element, for example. If you use capture, you'll have to go into the capture module and add those API keys. And reusable options are just, the when you have drop down menus, you can create sets of reusable options and you need to kind of go in and customize the ones that the web form module ships with and probably create your own. And so understanding how to configure the web form module, it's a really key thing that you kind of understand the overall architecture of the web form module. And this side kind of breaks it down into three sections. And the first one is about your forms. That's the forms that you're creating. And it starts off with a form. And the forms consist of elements. And some elements have options. And then once you've created that form, you can kind of move yourself into the second column because someone hits submit on that form and it creates a submission. And then when a submission comes into Drupal in the web form module, it's handled. Maybe you're sending an email. And then once that data has been stored in Drupal and reviewed, you can export it. And that's where export has come in. And the third tab kind of goes into just kind of peripheral functionality or features around the web form module, which is you have your third party libraries, your advanced settings. And if you have translations enabled, you can start translating your web forms. And this is a breakdown of how it looks in the UI and it's kind of following the same thing I just showed you, but it's just important you start to see the flow, top to bottom, left to right. And as you're getting familiar with the web form module configuration, I recommend going from left to right and starting with forms. And I can demo this for you. I'm in a clean install. I'm gonna go over to the configuration tab and we start off with forms. I'm gonna talk a little bit as we walk through, but you can set the default URL path. I gotta emphasize when I'm showing this to you, you don't need to change many things here. Nothing here. These are just the messages. Concept is that you have the ability to customize these things and translate them. And then with classes, yes, this, these are default classes that you can add to your form. You could wrap your form in a message class or make it an inline form. If you're using a theme like Bootstrap, you can add Bootstrap specific classes to this list. A very advanced functionality. You can also do that with buttons. And you can set on, turn on and off certain behaviors for all your forms. 
Um, for example, if you feel client-side validation has accessibility issues, you can disable client-side validation for all forms or disable inline form errors for all web forms. Um, you can display a require indicator. You start getting the idea of how it's working. Now we're getting back into labels. You can just customize. There's a lot of labels that you can customize. I personally tend to never customize these. Um, and then if you install third-party settings, you can turn, in the case of Honeypot, you can turn on Honeypot for all your web forms and add time restrictions. Jumping back up, elements. So you can set certain things with placeholders, what HTML tags are allowed in the description, um, in markup that's being rendered. Once again, you can set classes for your elements in the wrappers. Horizontal rules, you can say what the classes are to enhance your horizontal rules. Um, description, you can set default displays, section type. You get into, you don't have to tweak this. I keep, I'm gonna have to say that every single tab we go through. You can also tweak your HTML editor. You can use text formats if you need to. I tend to like a simpler for, um, HTML editor that doesn't have a lot of extra features around it. Um, there's that API key that, yes, if you're using location element, you do need to set this. Um, moving forward with file uploads, this is where, you know, allowing access to the public file system, what file extensions are supported. This is a key one. These are the element types. You can turn them on and off. Um, actually, there's an example here because um, we have the ability, the web form supports password elements, but they're off by default because it's stored as plain text, so we don't recommend that someone uses it. And if you actually check these off, you're going to get a warning. Um, but for certain applications, especially if you're pushing these passwords to an external server using encryption, yeah, you might want a password element. Um, finally, you can control the formats of how that data is going to look. It's not often that you need to customize that. So options. We'll take a second for options is, so if you had a, these are options that are used by select menus. So if you had a drop down menu for days, these are the default days of the week that would be displayed and these are translated. Um, you should go in and review all of these. Um, recently we started showing where they're being used on what forms. So for example, we, you know, for example, in the job application, you're using these gender options. So if you edit these options here, it'll affect these five forms. If you delete these gender options, you're going to break these five forms because they won't have the data that's needed. It won't be catastrophic, but it's not great. Um, and country, names, yes or no. You should go create your own as needed. Um, submissions, once again, we're getting into a lot of labels here that you can customize. You can turn on logging for all submissions. Um, purging, if you enable purging, you're going to want to you know, set, it's batch, done in batches, so you're going to want to set some sort of threshold. Um, handlers, so here you can kind of set your global defaults for your emails. So email settings, like what's the default email address? What's the default template? If you have a custom template that you want to use, and you can turn on and off your handlers as needed. Generally, you don't need to. Um, I have this broken handler just in case you can turn that off. That actually doesn't display to end users. Um, moving on, exporters. So these are you. This is a nice feature with exporting submissions is you can set default settings so that when someone goes in to export, they'll get your global defaults, which might be, you might say you want to always export to Excel and you can decide what the delimiters are and you get all the settings here. Once again, you can turn on and off the exporters at the bottom. And now we get into libraries and libraries includes two things, documentation on how to install the libraries and you can also add, or better yet, way to put it is inject custom CSS and JavaScript into all your forms. Generally, you should do this at the theme layer, but sometimes you might want to add it here, especially if you just don't want to start messing with your theme and you need to tweak a minor aspect of the web form module and what's being rendered. Finally, at the bottom, you can enable and disable your external libraries. You know, the web form module shifts with support for select two and chosen. Select two seems to be where Drupal might be going, so that's on by default. You can turn that off and turn on the chosen library. I check's been deprecated, but you start to get the idea of what's going on here. Finally, wow, see this is exhausting. There's a lot to go through. We're in advanced. You can tweak the user interface. You can decide how videos are going to be displayed. The videos are using YouTube. If you don't want YouTube dropping cookies on your site, you can turn them off or have an external link that opens in YouTube, and I think that gets past the cookie issue. 
disable dialogues, promotions, contribute section. There's a lot of requirements checking and certain requirements. If you're okay using a CDN, you can turn off that requirement. Um, there's a web form bootstrap module warning that'll happen. You could turn that off. There's also a warning to enable spam protection, which I don't think you should turn that off. You should enable spam protection. Finally, there's the test data set. So if you're testing your web forms, this is the test data that's used. If you don't like, for example, using the Beatles, you can put in other names and other data and other values. And then this is the batch setting and you know the ability to just display debugging notice and that's triggered by the web form develop module. I know this is a lot to go through. Take your time going through it and keep in mind you don't need to change much to get started. So let's keep going. Whoop. So the takeaway here is there's a configuration for that. Um, that's kind of my personal mantra with the web form module. I think it's really important that Everything and anything is customizable. Um, that's, I'm pausing because I got to just put it this way. That's the power of Drupal is that's our concept is you can do anything you want because you own the code. It's open source and you should be able to build whatever you need. And what if I can't configure something via the UI? Well, there's a hook. Well, I like saying it. Okay, there's a module hook or template for that. That is a Drupal mantra. That is, you can do whatever you want. And, you know, with the Webform module, everything's using templates. There's a bunch of hooks to tweak your elements. And you can get modules to help improve your user experience. Um, so some exercises, things to think about with configuration. Definitely enable and disable form elements. Add custom reusable options. I like switching select who to chosen. That gives you, you know, a good idea of how libraries are working. Adding custom classes that can be applied to buttons and classes, you know, oh, I messed this one up. I'm sorry. I'll have to fix this. But add custom classes to buttons. Add custom classes to your elements too. Um, I hope this helps. Um, you can learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. Thank you.